Greetings everyone in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Akim Yovu from Dubai Central SDA Church. We are starting a year 2024 with a new program which is introducing to us what we believe as Adventists. So in this program, we'll be going through all our fundamental beliefs. I, I think you know that we have 28 fundamental beliefs, the things that we believe as Adventists. So we are sharing with you church members and the non-church members so that you understand who are we as Adventists, what we believe in. So in these 28 fundamental beliefs or series, today we are starting with the scriptures or the Bible. So we are building all our fundamental beliefs from this belief number one, which talks about the Bible or the scriptures. If you look at this book called the Bible I'm holding here, this book called the Bible, it is one of the books that is so loved worldwide. And at the same time, it is one of the books that is so hated by people. Some people do not like to hear about this book called Bible. They think the book is used to colonize or to have upper hand on someone else. And uh, if you look at this book called the Bible, you will realize that many people have died because of this book called Bible. And some have killed people using the Bible. So you can look at this Bible, a book which is loved, a book which is so hated, it has caused a lot of dangers or disasters around the world. And at the same time, it is one of the book that has changed the lives of many people from being criminals to live a holy life. It has inspired a greatest men to do noble acts. And at the same time, it has been blamed for degenerating some people into doing wrong things. But today you want to look at what it can do when it is used correctly. What is its purpose? Is it holy? Is it a word from God? Is it inspired? We are going to look at all these things as we are looking at the Bible. Mind you, you must know that the Bible is a book of books. There are 66 books that are combined together to bring what we call a Bible. So a Bible is a library of 66 books. Uh, from these 66 books, we have 22 books which are historical in nature. They tell us about things that happened in the past. And then we have 21 books that largely talk about prophecy. Remember, prophecy tells us about things that are happening and things that will happen in future. So we have 21 books in the Bible that are regarded as prophets, as prophets books. We have 21 books which are called letters. Some call them epistles. We have 21. And then we have the last two books which are regarded as poetic. These, you look at them, they look like poems. So this is the Bible we are talking about. Then you go into it, it's amazing to realize that there are 36 authors who wrote this book, who wrote this Bible, 36 writers. And uh, you look at their professions, 
status and backgrounds they vary they differ some were kings some were farmers some were lawyers some were generals some were fishermen some were ministers some were priests some were tax collectors and some were doctors but guess what as you go through the whole book or the whole public collection of these 66 books from 36 different authors you will realize this amazing thing they tolerate they measure there are no distortions or disputes among these writers and guess what these books were written in a period of over 1600 years people from different backgrounds who lived at different times from different professions farmers kings poor the rich the educated and educated they wrote these books in a period of more than 1600 years and their writings are common their writings tolerate so it shows us that there is something or someone behind all these writers it shows us that these writers were not by their own they were inspired by the same source because their writings give us almost one theme which is the salvation of men as you look again into this bible people are questioning a lot can bible be trusted can we say bible is authentic who were the writers of this bible we say that in this bible we will discover historical events we will discover letters and prophets one may argue that are these historical events really events that happened can we trust the bible so i'm glad to inform you that this bible has evidences that proves to us that bible can be trusted we have what we call eternal evidence eternal evidence these are scriptures that are found within the bible itself to support its worthiness to support that it was written by god so we will look into these scriptures briefly today but before we look into those internal evidences we have what we call external evidences these are evidences that are not found in the bible but they give us evidence or proof that the bible can be trusted where do we find these these ones we find them from archaeology as we start archaeology there are extractions which were done by archaeologists that it is proven to the world that the Bible records are accurate records of what happened in the past. We have also historians. These are people, some of them lived during the times of the Bible, who were historians on their own, secular historians, who were writing things to do with the historical events that are found in the Bible. So we will, in the next segment of our lesson, look or dig deeper into these external sources that prove that the Bible is trustworthy, Bible is authentic. So today we will not dwell much on archaeological evidence and historical evidence, but I will just give you what some archaeologists have said and some historians you have said for example we have historians that's like josephus we have historians like tacitus plin the younger all these and some historians we will look into deeper in our next segment they give us the proof about the authenticity of the bible so i just want to give you a summary of what archaeologists 
and the historians say about the Bible. Let me start with this archaeologist whose name is called Joseph Free. Joseph Free. Joseph Free says, Archaeology has confirmed countless passages which had been rejected by critics as inhistorical or contrary to known facts. So this guy, Joseph Free, an archaeologist, is saying, through archaeology, they have discovered that passages that have been criticized by people from the Bible, people saying these are not uh, biblical scriptures, but archaeology, through the archaeological studies, it has been proven beyond any doubt that these scriptures are indeed uh, scriptures that were found in the Bible. Another Jewish archaeologist, a renowned one, by the name Nelson Clark, he said about the Bible, it may be stated categorically that no archaeological discovery has ever controverted a biblical reference. Scores of archaeological findings have been made which confirm in clear outline or exactly detail historical statements in the Bible. This Jewish archaeologist says there is no archaeological discovery that is disputed what has been written in the Bible. Actually, in actual sense, he is saying all that archaeologists have discovered is a proof of the authenticity of the Bible. There is no archaeological discovery that has disputed the facts that are laid in the Bible. We have another one again by the name Josh McDowell. Josh McDowell is a Christian uh, archaeologist. He says this about the Bible. After personal trying to shatter the historicity and validity of the scriptures, I have come to the conclusion that they are historically trustworthy. This man is saying, after thorough start of archaeology and looking into archaeological discoveries, he is convinced, he has come to the conclusion that events that are written in the Bible, indeed they took place, they happened. Archaeology has proven that. So in our next episode, we will be dealing with archaeological evidence to prove that Bible is trustworthy and it contains facts of things that uh, happened in the past. Then let us go to what historians say. We'll just look at two historians who wrote about the Bible. Number one is Papias. Papias lived during the days of John the Apostle. He wrote this he says about John, he says John wrote, uh, John wrote that, he says John testified that the gospel of Mark was based on Simon Peter's memories of Jesus' life and ministry. Papias is of the view that because he was living by the time of John the Apostle, he says when you look at uh, the book of Mark, the book of Mark, it's clear that the writer of the book of Mark got memos from the Apostle Peter, which he put together to write the book of the Gospel of Mark. Because he lived during that time as a historian, he was writing this, putting it on paper so that we may have trust on the word of God. Another historian, a powerful one, I love this one, Irenaeus. Irenaeus was born around AD 125 years, so AD 125, less than 40 years after John wrote his gospel. So when you are talking about early church fathers or early, so early church historians, you cannot exclude this man. 
he has volumes and volumes about commentaries about what happened to early Christian church. So he has this to say. He says, so firm is the ground upon which these gospels rest that the very heretics themselves bear witness to them. And starting from these documents, each one of them endeavors to establish his own particular doctrine. Arrhenius has this to say. He says, when we look at the gospels that were written by the apostles, he says their foundation is firm. These are historical events that took place. He says the writings, their writings, when you dig deeper, you can confirm their foundation that it is very firm. So my brothers and sisters, from historical and archaeological evidence, we can believe or trust in the Bible. We can believe or trust in the scriptures. In our next episode, we will be bringing to you evidence from these historians and archaeologists about what they said about the Bible, their studies, their discoveries about the authenticity of the Bible. For now, let us go quickly into internal evidences that we found in the Bible. What do the Bible writers themselves say about the Bible, about their writings, about the scriptures in totality? First of all, I want you to understand that when we come to these Bible writers, we, we find how God communicated to them. When we say that the Bible was inspired or the Bible writers were inspired, what do we really mean? Did God detect to the Bible writers every word that is in the Bible? The answer is no. God never detected every word to the Bible writers. Actually, God inspired their thoughts. Some, for example, like Moses, were given things that were written by God himself. Remember, if you start about Moses, you will realize that God wrote himself on the tip of stones, Ten Commandments, and he gave them to Moses. When Moses broke them, he had to sew other stones and bring them to God, and God had to write with his own finger. So when it comes to Ten Commandments, it is from the finger of God himself. So on Ten Commandments, it is God himself who wrote. But when you come to other texts that we are getting from Moses, we find out that God was telling Moses what to tell Israelites. Moses sometimes was taken up on the mountain and God would speak to him from the voice to go and tell the Israelites. That's how God would speak to his prophets in the Old Testament. Sometimes God would speak to the prophets through dreams and through visions. Some of them they would have dreams, some of them they would have visions, and God would be speaking to them through that. Not all received dreams, not all received visions. Some of them, it was a thought from their mind, from the experience they had with God, on what God had done for them in their life. They would write from that experience. So we will consider few texts from the Bible that tells us about the word of God. Let us begin from this powerful text which is written by Paul to Pastor Timothy in the second book of Timothy, chapter 3. I want to read from verse number 15 to hear what Paul says. Paul says, verse number 15, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, through faith which is 
in Christ Jesus. So Paul is writing to Timothy, the young pastor. He says, Timothy, let me remind you where your strength is. Let me remind you where your power lies. He says to Timothy, Timothy, from your childhood, from your young age, one thing you have known is the scripture. You have known the scriptures from your childhood. And these scriptures, they lead into the wisdom. They enlighten you. They make you wise unto salvation. So Paul is giving us the power of the scriptures, that scriptures can give us wisdom which is enough for our salvation. Everything we need for our salvation is found on scriptures. And he continues to say, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. We must underline the word all, all. Paul says all scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. There are some brothers who say some portions of scriptures are not inspired, but some portions are inspired. There are some who say Old Testament is no longer inspired or is no longer relevant. We can depend only on the New Testament. But here Paul says, my brothers and sisters, all scriptures, all scriptures, we cannot exclude a text, we cannot exclude a chapter or a book. All scriptures are inspired. And he says they are profitable for doctrine, for reproof, correction, and for instruction in righteousness. We must understand the importance of all these scriptures. They are good for our correction. They correct us, they instruct us, they give us the way we should walk as Christians if we are to be citizens of the new seat or new heaven. These scriptures are there to give us directions, to give us don'ts, to give us do how we should go about it. And he says, verse 17, these scriptures were given that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly finished unto all good works. So that's what Paul says about these scriptures. They are there to help us to perfect our works into good works. Let us look again into this scripture again by Apostle Peter. What Peter says about the scriptures. When you go with me in the book of Second Peter, that is chapter 1, verse number 21. Or let me start from verse number 19. Paul says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Where unto you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in hearts. Knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophets came not in the old by the will of men, but the holy men of God spake all as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So Paul says, you must remember that all people who wrote these scriptures, they did not do it on their own. They were moved by the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit that was behind them. Like I alluded earlier, that when these people were writing, God did not detect to them word by word. But God inspired their thoughts. So their thoughts, they were moved by the Holy Spirit. They were illuminated by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit moved them to speak what God desired us to know. So Paul says, so Peter says, you must know, that there is no scripture that comes from human imagination, from human thinking. It's all from God. It's all given by God. All the prophets 
that we have, all the books that we have are from God. So it's clear from internal evidence, from biblical evidence, that the writers of the Bible, they did not do it on their own. They were inspired by the Holy Spirit. That's why we saw that this Bible, yes, 36 authors who lived uh, along over 1,600 years and who are coming from different backgrounds but they are writing things that go hand in hand so it shows us that the source of their inspiration is one they were all inspired by god because of my time let me uh, summarize the few verses that i am having to show us that we must take heed of this word of god if you read from isaiah chapter 40 Verse number eight, Isaiah says, grass withers, flowers may wither, but the word of God live for long. So my brothers and sisters, this word, this Bible, endures time. It was good then, it is good now, it will be good forever and ever. It doesn't change like syllabuses we use in schools, but the Bible is the living word of God that transcends generations that transcend times it's still valid today it proves that this is the inspiration of the one who created the whole universe that's why in that motion isaiah says seek if you read isaiah chapter 8 verse number 20 if they speak not according to this word if they speak not to the law and to the testimony when he says to the law he refers to the five books of moses testimony he refers to other books by prophets he says to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word it is because there is no light in them the same isaiah again says if you read isaiah chapter 4 verse number 14 isaiah says seek ye from the book seek ye from the bible there is none of these things that are lacking for the word of God is spoken and he is spirit gathered together. My brothers and sisters, all that we need for our instruction, for our salvation, the spirit of God is gathered together in this book we call the Bible. It has every doctrine for our salvation. Therefore, any teaching that does not come from this book, that does not come from the Bible, cannot be trusted with. We cannot base our belief we cannot base our teachings outside from the Bible. We must dig from the Bible for all things are gathered together for our salvation. And remember what Romans says. This is my last text. Romans chapter 15, verse number 4. Let me read this one for our benefit. It's Romans chapter uh, 15, verse number 4. I will read this one as our last verse. Paul says here, in verse number four for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that through patience and comfort of the scriptures we might have hope so paul says my brothers and sisters all things that we gather together all things written in the old testament and in the new testament they were written for our benefit they were written for our good for all these, these things were put together to guide us, to help us to learn, so that through these things that are written in the, in the scriptures, we may learn how we should relate to God, how we should relate to one another. So beside the Bible, my brothers and sisters, we are hopeless. Beside the Bible, we are directionless. It is the light that can shine in our path. That's why the uh, psalmist says, it is the light in my feet, a lamp in my feet that can lead us to the greater light or to the path of righteousness. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, I am concluding today. Next episode, we are bringing you archaeological and historical evidence to support the authenticity of the scriptures from external sources. May God richly bless you.